Hey, what's up everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, so today at 6 o'clock Pacific time, the Lakers play in Portland at the Moda Center. And uh, it's going to be an emotional night, unfortunately, for Portland. Uh, they lost their longtime announcer, Bill Shawnley, I believe is his name. Um, you know, it's one of those situations where he was the coin, uh, or is that the way you say that? He, he coined the phrase uh, Rip City. And what I read was that his initial thought was uh, during a comeback against no less us. We had there was a 20 point deficit that we blew back in the 80s or something like that, 70s, who knows. And he was going to say, you know, in the middle of a play when a guy hit a jumper, uh, rip the twine. And instead, just his mouth just said rip city and instead. And, and it caught, you know, the phrase just stuck with Portland. So, yeah, man, that, that was a tough um uh, tough bit of news for their for their for their uh, organization and their fan base and uh you know i want to send condolences to his family and to all who loved him of course to portland and everyone there uh from laker nation we're with you and even we're go even though we're going to be competitors tonight he will be on our minds uh in the situation tonight so that's the first thing i wanted to say there because of the circumstance as we segue forward <clears throat> the lakers have to understand it's going to be a very emotional night we're walking in on something. We're walking into something, Lakers. And we know all about tough nights like this. What we don't want to do is allow that to coerce us into not doing what we're, what we're supposed to do. The thing about the Portland Trailblazers is they've lost two games straight. Um, one against the Denver Nuggets, where Denver just poured a lot of points on them. Um, and, and this is the thing. We have to understand before we go further that this team puts up a whole lot of points uh, in the games that they lost. They scored over 110 points and two previous matchups before those two lost games that I'm going to further tell you about against Denver and um, whoever else they played Philadelphia. Uh, they had two games, another one of those home and home games with Dallas that, that the league is infamous for giving out this season where you play two games in a row in the same building against the same opponent. Um, they had that with Dallas and, and just dropped 130 points, 132 on them in one night and 140 on them the next night. Um, so we need to understand that this is another one of those nights where you're going to have to score a whole lot of points to beat this team. Portland is not playing games. Um, and the thing about it, though, is as of late, they've gone super cold, just like the Memphis Grizzlies. They're coming off a game where they shot historically bad. And when I say historically bad, it probably wasn't that bad. But it was bad enough to where I wanted to say the word historically anyway. It was about 24% from the three and under 35% from the field. They bricked everything, man. They just missed everything. They couldn't hit a shot, save their soul. Uh, and it was one of those situations where it, it made life really easy on a Philadelphia team that wasn't really scoring that much themselves. I didn't watch any highlights of that brick fest. I was cool, man. I'm, I'm cold enough in my apartment. I don't need to watch cold shooting. So it was one of those situations where I just skipped that and just watched, <laughs> looked at the stats, to be honest with you guys. So context isn't necessarily there in regards to these games that Portland's tr played. But I don't care, to be honest with you. I got enough out of what it is that I saw. At the end of the day, what you're going to have to do is score points against the Portland Trailblazer team and respect their defense. Um, and reading one of the articles that I read, they're going to want to play if, if the article aligns with what it is that, that, that the team has been doing and what they believe it works. They're going to try to go man-to-man -man against us tonight. They're going to want to play straight up. they got guys like Josh Hart that are going to try to double-team LeBron James along with Jeremy Grant. Uh, young players like Shaden Sharp. Um, Watford may get some playing time tonight. Um, Drew Eubanks is another player who often gets double-doubles. When I check on his stats, he's usually playing well with big minutes. So they got a lot of players that are down there doing good. And, and one of my favorite young players um, who hasn't had a chance to really play very often over the last four years because – of injury issues and things of that nature. A guy by the name of Nazir Little, um, a small forward that they've had for a while. They just can't seem to get him uh, to play as much as he'd like to because of those injuries. But the upset has always been there for him to be a really, really good role player, small forward player, maybe even step up and be a, a, a starter for their team someday. But, you know, the injuries and other players being drafted have kind of stepped in, in front of him. But he's still very much someone who they want to use and, and get into rotation this season. So, uh, after being back now for about a week, I would suspect he should be somewhat 100%, which means he might have him a game tonight against us. So we need to be prepared for that. He's obviously at home. Dame, all of these guys, it is what it is, man. This is a very potent offense when they play properly. Uh, Dame Lillard is Dame Lillard. I don't have to explain to you guys who Dame Time is. 
I'm of the I'm of them. Ah, I'm of the belief, if I can speak, that Dame is 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 playing on a team that is as good as any team he's played on this season. This is as good as it's been because of the presence of people like Jeremy Grant, um, you know, Josh Hart stepping forward in year what five as a high level player. Anthony Simons also stepping forward as a serious player. You know, this is a breakout year for him. Um, a healthy uh, center position, which is rare for them. To have Nurkic down there 100% for a good stretch of time is a real luxury for their franchise. And just overall, just having a collect- collective of players that both play defense and offense. Um, it's not something they've had. Athletes that can catch lobs all over, up and down the, the, the situation. I think for Dame, it's one of those things where it's like he's he's got to learn how to play with all this talent in my humble opinion, because he's used to taking 30 shots a game. And I'm not certain that that's actually what's best for the unit that he has this season. For the first time, maybe ever, it probably would be better for him to distribute a little more and make sure that guys like Simons get a little bit more touches. Guys like Grant and Shaden Sharp, when, they, when they're when they on the floor, get more touches because they're so very talented and they really don't need him to score as much as they need that continuity. So I think that's the, the learning curve for the Portland Trailblazers overall as a team try to figure out how to best get the most out of Dame Lillard while still utilizing the playmaking abilities of a guy like uh, uh, Simons, who probably playmakes a little more fluidly than Dame does naturally, I guess you could say. He's more of a passer than I think Dame is. So this is a, it's, a, uh, it's a conflict of styles in my mind. I don't know if it actually translates to that because I don't watch him very much, but just in my head, it seems like it's a little bit of a conflict of styles. But the fact that they have Jeremy Grant down there, uh, it, it brings it together in a way that, that, that makes for quality possessions on the other end if for some reason things don't work out offensively they're getting stuff out of him on the defensive end regardless so I like Portland this year I really do I'm not going to sit here and say that I think they're a championship team this season but I don't I would not be surprised if they overachieved um this season just because of the type of killer instinct that Dame has and just the need for players to keep the game close for him to get to those moments all this time I think he has that now players that can hold their own so that if he has to take a game off they're not tumbling down the standings so even though they've been underachieving a little bit and I don't know what it's all accredited to because I just didn't study them that much but what I can say is the games that they lost it was a whole lot of um, just bad shooting discipline that's the best way I know how to describe it just a lot of volume shooting from Dame volume shooting from others and just not turning into a whole lot for them so maybe we can have that carryover, you know. Obviously, we're not Philadelphia. We don't have Joel Embiid on the floor to try to create and, and, and all these different types of things that the Philadelphia has uh, at their service for themselves. But we do have a different type of attack that can make things a little frustrating for Portland, for sure. We've already beaten them once this season. And granted, Anthony Davis was down there. Austin Reeves was down there. And we don't expect either one of them to play tonight. Um, although Austin Reeves is close. I think this is probably going to be a game where they still have him listed as out. Uh, but I haven't seen the updated. Um, they just haven't released the updated uh, uh, injury report as of yet. So I really am not certain who's all playing. And of course, as the day trickles out, they might have some late scratches and stuff like that. James is a uh, is a day to day. He's listed as day to day right now with his ankle. But that's been that way for like three weeks. Um So, yeah, this is one of those situations where I look at this game and I say, okay, we're coming off of a game against Memphis where uh, we were happy to have won the game. We were lucky to have won the game, but we did things that were intentional and made sure that we took the game from Memphis. It wasn't like we stumbled into a win. We took a close game after having struggles rebounding the ball that uh, rivaled some of the worst struggles we've had ever. Offensive rebounding just was the worst thing we had ever seen, but we knew it was going to be that way because of how Memphis is constructed and how we're constructed without some of the players we need to rebound the ball. So we knew that it just wasn't going to work out if we were going to solely pay attention to that stat. But that wasn't the only one that mattered. The free throw stat is where we really won the game. Uh, Dennis Schroeder going 10 for 11 and others going, um, made a high percentage following his lead, really put us in a position to take advantage of them going 67% or something of that nature. And when you shoot that poorly, from the line on the road uh you're going to leave the door open for the team that you're going against to come through the door whether you have mismatches and things of that nature or not and because they weren't able to shoot well enough as a whole from the field or the three uh against us it left us just enough room to make a play down the stretch that could win the game and it did that we did that uh Dennis Schroeder stole the ball and 
started the other way and, and just sealed the victory for us. Uh, Russell Westbrook also pitched in with 29 points, which I thought was 24 points. I guess I read that wrong or they updated it after I started the video. I don't know, but he walked away with more points than I initially thought he had. So that was excellent. Um, and we're just we were just able to kind of overcome our small ball rebounding crisis because that's what it was uh, to to squeeze out a close victory. And we can credit some of that to to our strategy and fouling down the stretch and stuff like that. Um, so giving sending Adams to the line was really key to all of that uh, down the final five minutes of the game. So limiting our defensive possessions, taking better shots, ultimately uh, just just helping ourselves finally get a close victory, which we have thrown away against this team. In fact, the fourth game of the season, we had a two point loss to this team where I think Dame dropped over 40 points. But we had an opportunity to win that game and didn't. AD was on the floor. Brown was on the floor. And we still could not get it done. Granted, it was the fourth game of the season, so we didn't even use Winyan Gabriel at all. We didn't use Thomas Bryant at that time. We were still leaning on Patrick Beverly in 40 minutes a game. We were just doing everything wrong early. I think we went like three foot. It was, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, it was like six foot 30 something from behind the arc. It was awful. Uh, so we just hadn't learned who we were yet as of, at that time. But since then, we've beat them once uh, in a game after that indie game where we got on. It got embarrassed when Indy came into our building and, and just completely took a game that we knew we were supposed to get. Yeah, we played Portland the very next game and made up for it real quick. Wasn't a memorable game. Braun hit six threes. Um, but for me, it was just like I still had the taste of that Indy loss in my mouth, I think, after that Portland game. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily something that really stuck in my mind. But we got another opportunity. We're going into their building in this one. Um, and like I said, they got a pretty healthy squad, man. The only person that's listed is out, from what I understand, is Justice Winslow, which is a big deal because he played well against us last time, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, all in all, you know, with our guys being under, you know, undermanned, <clears throat> I, I really do believe that it's a good chance that we'll probably run more small ball tonight in spite of all the struggles that we had against Memphis. Um, I would prefer our coach lean on Max Christie a bit more. That's one of the things I didn't get a chance to talk about in the last game. I just felt like, it, yet again, another one of those situations where Max Christie had played well enough to get minutes in the second half and was needed because of his size, but just wasn't gone to. Um, there was no rhyme or reason. He didn't have no turnovers, no no fouls. Um, and I think he had only missed a shot or something like that. It was just no rhyme or reason to it. But we were going small, right? And it was to our detriment. So I, I just look at that and say, Coach, I... I I just have to chalk that to one of those things where I say you, you're doing the stuff that we want you to stop doing. When it comes to this players playing well and us needing size, there's no reason not to play Max Christie. No reason. I, I can give you reasons why we didn't play Thomas Bryant against the Rockets and Dallas. I can see that. But not going to Max in this previous matchup, yeah, there was no real logic for that. There was none. I promise you there wasn't. Even when he was on defense, he was getting stops. So it was, it was nothing. It's just with nothing. So that's what I want us to kind of get away from, man. I know our coach has a lot to focus on, but when stuff like that sleeps through the cracks, it really frustrates us because we know what our problems are out there and his size. So when you see a guy having made any real mistakes and him not being played and your coach leaning on guys who can't get, get it done and you giving up 25, 24 offensive rebounds, and you know Max Christie, he crashes the glass as good as any rookie I've seen. So it's one of those situations where it's like there's no actual reason for that. You're just doing the opposite of what you should, and it's being called out. That's it. Play Max Christie in situations where it makes sense, and that was definitely one of them. So, yeah, that's what I want to see, man. And, and I'm not the only person who's, who's mentioned this. We have a problem playing players uh, who've earned minutes by playing well. And when you mess with people's confidence, like we've been messing with TD's confidence particularly, they're going to play poorly. The dude was balling out for a whole week. I even added him on most of my fantasy teams, only for him to have a week where it wasn't hardly on the floor. And when he was, he struggled. And now his confidence is shot. Those same shots he's been making these last couple weeks, he's missing now. And you can see it in his body language. I think it was even Stu Lance who pointed it out. You just can't pull a guy's minutes for no reason, coach. Just because he ran into a bad Dallas team, uh, or rather a bad matchup for his position, uh, does not mean that you continue to decrease his minutes because he struggled in the, pri in the game after that. Because that's what happened. You know what I mean? He, played, he didn't want to play him against Dallas, pulled him, and then he went up against Alperin. And Alperin did what Alperin does. You know, 
what we're going to understand Alperin does to everybody going forward. Even though Anthony Edwards dunked on his head twice yesterday to make up for it. So thank you, Anthony Edwards. We'll take that. But it's one of them situations where it's like, yeah, man, he he really embarrassed Thomas Bryant. And now Thomas, I guess, has lost the faith of the coach for some inexplicable reason. And now the coach don't want to play him. And when he does play him, he only gives him the short rope. It's nonsense, man. Thomas was playing like an all-star just two weeks ago. I don't need anything to change there, coach. Honestly, I don't need nothing to change. You got to run the same place through him. You got to give him the same looks. And you got to keep him on the floor when it makes sense, which is literally the whole time. Because honestly, Winyan Gabriel's not a center. He's a much better defensive player, but he's a four, a very natural four. He ain't a three. He ain't a five. He's a four. And we need to keep playing him at the four, man. Because every time we have him going up against guys like Jaron Jackson, it's a tough matchup. And he holds his own like crazy. Don't get it twisted. He balls out. But it's not his strength, man. We have rebounding issues when he is a rebounder. Why? Because you have him rebounding over people he cannot rebound over. Simply put, when you Gabriel get you 17 rebounds if you just let him play the four and have a five next to him. You see what I'm saying? He can get you 17, 18 boards himself. I know he can. If you leave him on the floor to do it enough, he'll do it. But you're not going to have any success if you have him trying to rebound over Steven Adams or Yusef Nurkic. It's all about how you use guys. The same thing we said about Dennis Schroeder in the previous Laker uh, chat video. You can't have Dennis Schroeder down there as a three or Lonnie Walker down there as a three. They're going to look bad. And then we're going to assess them as bad. And that ain't even what happened there. What happened was you put them on the floor, coach, in a bad position. So as we continue to look at stuff that we don't like, we're going to call out and hopefully see some changes, man. I want our coaching staff as a whole to help Darvin Ham out. He ain't the only person there. You know what I mean? And that's another thing. When, I, when Russell Westbrook says to, to the coaching staff we need to do better, and, and, you know, they say we all need to do better. No, coaching staff. Let me, BDF44 is telling you, you need to do better, coaching staff. Don't disarm Russell Westbrook <laughs> in this situation when I'm looking at stuff that's directly related to the coaching staff and the coaching staff alone. Let's do better and let's be better, man. So that's what I'm on. I don't, I don't want to have any more excuses for our team. Obviously, we're happy we won that last game, but we also know we could have lost that game 100 times if we played it 101 times. It's just not something you're going to be able to overcome every night when the guys out get second chance points on you at the clip that the Memphis Grizzlies did. The Portland Trailblazers are very much capable of rebounding the ball. I ain't going to say they got Memphis like rebounders, but they got athletes. Lots of them. Jeremy Grant, Shaden Sharp. You understand? Yusef Nurkic. These guys are going to rebound the ball. Josh Hart. They're going to rebound the ball. We know this. And I mean, do not take Josh Hart lightly. That's another thing. Josh Hart has kind of stepped into a real player in this league over the last couple years. And he went through down with a real injury last season. But before he went down with that injury, he was damn near playing like an all-star. We remember who this guy is when he played for us in the summer league and got the summer league MVP. He put the ball in his hands at the top of the court and he broke everybody down repeatedly. There are levels to this man's game that has not been explored on a professional level since that time. And I know for a fact that Josh Hart can go off if you allow him to. Given the fact that it's an emotional night for his team and he's going up against his old Lakers squad, he's going to want to show up and show out. And I don't know if the minutes are going to allow for that, given the fact that he got Simons and Dame to deal with. But when he's on the floor, if we're not absolutely keen on understanding that we need to defend him, he could go off. He could go off. And so that's one of the things I'm looking at. I'm like, all right, we're going up against an old Laker in his own home. You know what that means. That means that he's going to have a lot of confidence. So we have got to respect Josh Hart tonight. There are a lot of guards to consider, and Dame is the centerpiece. But you cannot sleep on the other team tonight. Don't. Uh, so this is one of the situations, especially since Dame is coming off an extremely cold game. You know what I mean? It may be incumbent upon him to look for other guys, and I think it'll be incumbent upon him to step forward. So if he ain't start off hot, and he doesn't continue to shoot his team into the, to the ground, it's going to be on them other dudes to try to take this game from us. And it's going to be on us to respect them and not leave them open. Um, so that's what I'm thinking about, man. I don't want to see no open three-point shots. I want to see us play the perimeter good. You know, I was a little, uh, I guess the word would be impressed with how Dylan Brooks closed out to the three-point line. We don't have players want to dart out there other than Patrick Beverly. Ain't nobody closing out that fast on our team. We need to do a better job of studying what we saw there and do that. Max Christie uh, is fast enough to do that, but he needs to make quicker actions, man. I know you're trying to read and react, read and react. You're scared to make some of those turnovers that you made like he did against Cleveland, like he did in another game. But I tell you, man, faster actions are what's best for this squad. You know what I mean? Uh, not second-guessing yourself at all. Same thing with Thomas Bryant. It's, it's only a couple things that we're going to really ask you to do. Rebound the ball, hit your mid-range jumpers, score the ball, corner threes. It ain't too much else to that. You know, inside, dunking the ball, rebound the ball. That's it, Thomas. So there's no reason to hang your head, bro. Your coach, he's tripping. 
Literally, he's tripping, bro. There's nothing wrong with how you're playing. I thought you should have played in the Dallas game. It's, you, we know you're not a defensive player, but we do like that you are trying to be more defensive. But do not let situations where Patrick Beverly's in the paint guard and your man ever happen again. Never let that happen again, bro. It's going to be hard to defend you when you let that happen. But other than that, I think our coach is tripping. I think Thomas Bryant needs to be starting and playing at least 30 minutes while AD is out. And we need to be trying to get him the ball in the second half with intent, just like we would AD to try to simulate that situation, as I've said a million times. Coach, please, let's keep doing things that work for our squad, man. I know you got a lot of personalities to deal with. But if you can't see the fruit and not running the small ball after Memphis, I don't know what to tell you, bro. <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you. You barely won that game. There was so much left open because of that size disadvantage. And I don't know that we don't have the same size disadvantage tonight. So we got to be respectful of Jeremy Grant's ability to offensive rebound. He can give you some of that Jaron Jackson. Don't think he can't. He can give you a lot of that Jaron Jackson. Um, and so he's going he's gonna to control the ball more as well. He's going to dribble the ball. He's going to try to dunk on people. It's going to be an interesting game for him if, he's, if he steps forward the way I know he's able and he has an efficient night. It's going to be hard for us to beat them. So that's what I'm looking at, man. If Jeremy Grant goes for 30, 35 points, we out of here. Ain't no way we beating him. Uh, so we definitely have to keep an eye on him and, and keep guys like Winion on him. Um, so this is what it is, man. Uh, I, I do believe that we have some players who've played well as of late that need to be mentioned, man. Kendrick Nunn has been balling. You hear me? I don't think it's really being respected the way that he's been playing especially since he had that three-point shot that was clutch and he didn't get the call and he messed up the, the whole situation where he could have got back and it turned into whatever he did, et cetera, et cetera. But we need to just zero in on the fact that he hit a clutch three because nobody said anything about that. Like He literally hit a clutch three. So let's just acknowledge that Kendrick Nunn is in getting in better shape and that is key to it all. He's coming off a year-long injury that didn't allow him to play a single game. He got out of hefty shape. And when he was with the Miami Heat, the boy was lean and running all over the place and jumping on a, all over stuff. That is who he didn't have. He was somewhat of a chubby version of himself to start this season. And he did was unsure of himself. He didn't know what to do. And he was making bad decisions a lot of the time. I need his basketball IQ to, to, to rise. But what I also need us to respect is the fact that as he gets in better shape, he's going to rise. We saw how he was dunking in that last game. That boy got off the ground. I didn't even know he had them type of hops. So let's just take a look at what Kendrick Nunn is becoming as he gets in better shape because we're finding out that he has stuff in him that ain't who we've seen. And that dude that we saw running around, he was not in shape. If Kendrick gets in shape, he's a weapon, sort of like Lonnie, and I'm starting to realize that. So my faith in him is almost like Russell Westbrook. You know, I don't want him doing too much controlling of the offense. I don't want him to have to try to, try to remember too much or do too much. But if we let him stay in actions that he can be successful in, rhythmic plays that give him rhythmic passes, uh, Kendrick could be a problem, a much better problem than he's been for us, you know, in, 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 a, in a bad way. He's, he, could, he could turn that around and turn it into a good one, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about what Kendrick is going to be able to do. And I'm telling you right now, I do expect to trade him. I'm not against trading him, but I know we're trading a better player than we've had. I know that. Whoever is going to get Kendrick Nunn is going to get a lot more from Kendrick Nunn than we've gotten from him in the first half. And I'm telling everybody that right now. Expect it. Know it. It's true. So we're going to see better Kendrick Nunn going forward. I'm not certain how we want to rotate him going forward with so many guards. Still got Patrick to play. Still got Lonnie coming back. Still got Austin coming back. It's a lot of guys. But my belief is that if we continue to play Kendrick Nunn at consistent minutes, he's going to turn into a real scorer for us. There are going to be some things he ain't going to do right. But there are going to be a lot of things that he does do right, and we're finding out that he can be athletic. And that, that's big, man. That's really big. So I, to say I'm not excited about Kendrick, no, it would be a lie. I'm, I'm excited about the upside from here. I think there's going to be some good things to see there so long as we can keep him healthy and not ask him to do things he ain't going to be no good at doing, just like everybody else. So that's, what, that's the thing. Um, JTA, it's a struggle, man. It's a struggle. He's working hard. It's not really turning into a whole lot. I know he can hit that corner three. We don't often allow him to get it. I think that's where he can shine. You know, you got to allow guys to do what their strengths are. And he shot over 40% last year from behind the arc, even at small volume, small minutes. We got to get him in play positions and do what he does well in the offensive end because he didn't gonna really do too much on the offensive end other than catch and shoot situations, maybe a couple offensive rebounds, get to the line. But I don't think JTA really has too much in his bag, man. And to be honest with you, this is one of those situations where it gets tough for me because I'm looking at him and I'm saying, if I want him on the floor, the chances are I want him on the floor for defense. 
he's a good effort guy with defense. He doesn't make too many mistakes. But, he, he, you know, it's one of those situations where he's not going to lock down people on the defensive end. He's gonna, it's going to equate to him being just good, you know, not great, a little above average on the defensive end, well below average on the offensive end. So what you have down there, not a whole lot of production. Now, he's a big guy. So that size and that switchability is, is, is helpful. And if he gets out in the open court, he's done some good things. He, we've seen him dribble at the ball, catch fast break situations, finish him. So he does have some stuff. It's not like he's just completely devoid of talent. But I don't know that he's in a, at an NBA level, y'all. I'm not going to even pretend like I actually think that he is. Um, he's, he's not, dude. But what he is is somebody who's helping us for the time being. And if we play him the right way, he can be supportive to what it is that we do. But I think we lean on him a little too much. And I think when we do, we find that, that it's a whole lot of nothing a lot of the times. But some of the times, he does a, a big thing. He'll get a big steal, get a, draw fouls. You know what I mean? So he does intangible things. It's not like he's devoid of help in us. But I just know we can get more elsewhere. I know it. That's all I can really say, man. I just know we can get more elsewhere. So that's, that's how I feel about the situation. I want to be nice about it, you know what I mean? Because I really like the player. I think he brings a lot to the locker room. I like his character. Um, and I just, wish, I just wish that we could get more out of him. I wish, I wish he could hit like a couple threes in a row so we could feel really excited about him, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. But, you know, it's, it's rough. It's a rough situation. We'd sub him in. I try my best to be optimistic. But my eye te- the eye test tells me he's, he's just not very good, man, honestly. Uh, so we, we keep on trugging, though. We, we, we trug along. And, and as we continue to play, uh, we, we're going to – you know, see guys improve. Obviously, playing next to Bron and, and Westbrook and these guys, it's going to rub off on everybody. And as long as they're continuing to work together instead of against one another, Bron and Westbrook, uh, we got a chance to win most of the games we're in. And I think we do, if we, especially if we line up properly. Um, Troy Brown, another guy that needs to be mentioned. He's been playing well. Three point shot was not falling in the last game. He missed seven shots. But I think the three threes that he did hit were ultimately key. And his defensive prowess and help on that side of the ball, his length, uh, his ability to be fast, rebound, all of that. It's really, really helpful. So if he can just find his confidence and keep it and just be himself at all times and, and, and be reliable with the 25, 30 minutes that he's given or whatever, uh, we're better. Because at the end of the day, a lot of the lineups we go to, he needs to be a part of. Some small ball lineups and these rotations where we don't have – too much going on, Braun at the five, stuff like that. Troy needs to be in those lineups. He is the great stabilizer to all of this stuff that, that coach wants to do. So between him and William Gabriel, I, I just think it's important that we rotate those players and keep them on the floor about as often as we can so long as they're not playing horribly. So that's really what it is for Troy. If he's playing well, we got to keep him out there. Him, Max Christie, I just think they, they provide so much. William Gabriel... I would rely on those players much more than our coach does if I, if I had control of the roster. They would be on the floor more because I know they can get stops and I know they're going to give me more on the offensive end and some of the stuff that he, some of the guys he goes to. So it's my preference, but uh, here's what it is. Dennis Schroeder has been giving us great stuff. Obviously, we talked a lot about him getting the steal, eight rebounds, eight assists, 10 of 11 free throws. Couldn't be more happy. Uh, in the article that I read that was referring to the Blazers, they also talked about him being one of the best players slashing to the rim going downhill which is not something i identified him as being so that was that was new to bring to you uh he really does slash well and and is considered one of the better slashers out there so you know we got to use him in lineups that make sense as i always say don't have him down there next to patrick and wessel westbrook that is just not gonna work man we gotta be okay with telling guards that they're gonna have to sit darvin that's it bro that's that's what it is he don't want to tell Patrick Beverly, Dennis Schroeder, and Russell Westbrook that they got to sit. So he'll tell Thomas Bryant and, and, and Wynion Gabriel and Troy Brown that they got to sit. Because they have easier personalities to deal with, I'd imagine. That's my guess. But I'm telling you, it leads to losses. It leads to losses. And I think Dennis Schroeder, Patrick Beverly, and Russell Westbrook want to win games, man. That's what I think. Call me crazy, but I actually think they suit up to compete. And to get victories. Although Russell Westbrook has said some things to make you question how much winning actually matters to him. But nevertheless, to everybody else, I don't feel that way. And so I want to put them in situations where they can succeed. And if that means they're sitting next to me on the bench, we're winning together. Trust me, I ain't never in the game and I'm always happy 
So, and I ain't getting paid a dime. So each and every one of them players should be cool sitting next to coach and us getting a victory if that's what's necessary, man. If that's what's necessary. Because all this losing we doing together, that is garbage, bro. I'm telling you. Everybody walking away feeling like they had fun and we didn't win? I don't know nothing about that. So tonight is a night we're playing against Portland in Portland. We know when we go to that building, it's hard. We hardly win there. I'm not going to lie to you. Historically, we lose there more than we win. But this is an opportunity where we're going up against a team we know was cold last. Just like the Memphis Grizzlies we saw it carried over. It worked out. Usually when teams are cold before they see us, they're going to be cold in our, against us too. So we got to just try to see if there's any chance of us having some success off of misses. And of course, in that case, elbow rebounding, as we say, every video. So that's what I want to see us continue to take care of the basketball. We've been doing a good job with turnovers for the most part. No complaints there. Um, rebounding, obviously, offensive rebounds. We can only control what we can control. We, we need our roster to improve. And I do believe calling up Jay Huff will go a long way in that. Scotty Pippen. I do believe those guys rebound the ball as guards. You know, a Pippen is a good rebounding guard. So I think the Lakers are just missing opportunities for some of their G League talent sitting down there while they run around with JTA. I'm sorry, man. It's just the wrong way to go, but it is what it is. So we continue to advocate for the Lakers calling those guys up and giving them actual roles while we sit here and struggle. But, uh, you know, we're happy to have won our last game. You know, we, we've done some losing too. We know that. But if we could string together an opportunity for us to – you know, just beat some teams that, that we don't expect to necessarily beat. Obviously, Portland in their house with a healthy Dame, healthy Anthony. You don't necessarily expect to go up there and win um, per se, but I don't see us having beaten the Memphis Grizzlies hanging our head coming into this building. Not at all. Um, so I'm optimistic this could be a very serious basketball game. You know, I, I'm very optimistic that this, is gonna, this could be a barn burner or a close game or an emotional game, a buzzer game. This is one of those because at the end of the day with what, Portman is dealing with uh, the, the aura in the building is going to be that of an emotional and intentional in, in environment and understand as I said the Lakers are the team that he coined that phrase off of Rip City this is the team that they made their name off of so we have to understand they're going to be wanting to beat us symbolically and make no mistake we should want to beat them symbolically as well we don't like Portland we don't like Rip City <laughs> we respect that they're going through something, but don't get it twisted. We can't stand y'all. We ain't never like Portland. And we beat them in a game seven in 2000 and sent ourselves to the NBA Finals off of their back. I'll never forget that series. It was a great series. Scottie Pippen pulling towels off the racks. You know what I'm saying? Arvita Sabonis, Demonis' dad, screaming and hollering, holding his face. Rasheed Wallace with the, with the white patch in his head, hitting jump shots from the corner and the side that can't be contested. I remember the Portland team well. Damon Stoudemire. Listen, we don't like those guys still. To this very day, we don't want to have no parts of them. And right now, with a new regime in place, with Dame Lillard, Jeremy Grant, Anthony Simons, Shaden Sharp, call them nephew Shay, since Uncle Shay, nephew Shay. They got a lot of talent too, man. We got to deal with them. And given the fact that Shaden... Uncle Shea was the guy who uh, initially propelled us to our Memphis win. I think it's only right that we come into Portland and beat up on the other Shea today. So that's what I got to say, man. Be ready for the highlights because that boy can jump as well as any human alive. I kid you not. I don't know if he's going to get a whole lot of minutes, but if I had control over Portland, he would be starting and he would be shooting at least 10 shots a game. That boy got talent, talent. And we need not take him lightly because rookies pop at any moment. But like I said, everything revolves around Dame. So if he takes 40 shots and nobody else shoots a shot, that's kind of how it goes. But if he just turns into a passer, Portland can score up 140, 150 points. They've already proven that this week. So be ready to defend. Be ready to rebound. Be ready for calls not to come your way. Do not slow down the latency of the play. And remember, we hit our free throws in the last game. And it made up for all kinds of other stuff we had no control over. So we need to be intent on doing that tonight. And if we do... We can send Portland home losers and let them deal with themselves. So that's what we got to do, man. Purple and gold all day. That's what it's about. BDL 44. I'll take you off watching.